That is how you introduce an amazing band, by letting their music speak for them. Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Stories of Art, the show where passionately crafted music takes us on an amazing journey, and we celebrate it for that. My name is Murphy, and today I want to explore the refreshingly archaic world of Beneath the Carpathian. Or Subcarpats, if you want to be a language purist. They're a Romanian musical project started in 2010 by this gloriously bearded fellow, Marius Andrei Alexe, also known as MC Bean, lead singer of the band, pardon my French, Sui Paparu. As you can hear in the song that is currently playing, their music is a fusion between Romanian folklore music and modern music genres like hip hop, drum and bass, electronic, rock, etc. etc. Now, to be fair, the concept of merging two or more styles, whether it be in music or any other form of art, is not something to write home about, since by this point in time it has already been done with almost every possible combination, and especially with hip hop. So, what makes the Subcarpathians, as I'm going to call them throughout the rest of this video, stand out? In one word, authenticity. And I'm not just talking about the fact that they're Romanians sampling Romanian folklore, I'm talking about how their music seems to come from something genuine and real. Two terms that seem to be thrown around a lot these days, so allow me to explain what I mean. Creating art in any medium is a form of expression from the artist. That much everyone can agree on, right? However, what the artist intends to express and what their creation actually expresses can end up being two completely different things. Now, this can depend on a lot of things, but I think that the most crucial variables are the artist's self-awareness and honesty towards their own intentions. But in general, you can rely more on the art since it doesn't have a reason to lie. As a few examples, when Alien Ant Farm covered Michael Jackson's Smooth Criminal, it came off as a tribute to the original's badass vibe, while emphasizing it even more by giving it a rock edge. Whereas when Will Smith sampled Patrice Ruchin's Forget Me Nots for the original Men in Black theme, the only intention I can get from that is, well, it sounds nice, people will like it. And granted, it does, and we do, but any connection to the original stops there. Now, there is a plethora of songs that sample old famous tracks in order to play on the love and nostalgia for the original. <coughs> But this video is about celebrating something real and actually felt. You can disagree with me on this and please do so in the comments below if you think I'm wrong, but from the Subcarpathians, I don't get the vibe that this is just a gimmick to attract more attention and sell more albums, mostly since they post all of their songs on their YouTube page with free download links and everything, nor do they have the blind fanaticism that one would usually associate with a band that samples its own country's folklore. Just listen to their music, specifically Well God, It Ain't My Fault and Grandpa Interview. But just in case you don't know Romanian, they're both songs that comment on the flaws of the Romanian people as individuals and as a country, but they also bring the idea that there is hope for them if they started taking responsibility for their own lives and doing something about them. Now, not all of their songs are introspective looks inside the inner workings of the Romanian people, because that would get repetitive and boring very quickly, no matter how much caval and screaming singers you add to your instrumental. For example, songs like When It Was In 89 and Forest Great Sir show some really creative uses of traditional melodies and singing techniques in combination with hip-hop instrumentals and themes. And honestly, they sound more like if a folklore group started making hip-hop tracks and not the other way around. Around Our Place in Babylon and Uni the Fiddler are both beautiful, almost cinematic ambient tracks that you would expect to hear in something like a Romanian version of Lord of the Rings. And I Grew Up Around Romana and Round Dance of Happiness managed to capture that hyper-energetic feel of parties from the old village square and the street corner where the b-boys would throw down. This type of complexity and diversity shows their passion for their art form, but it also gives their music the authenticity that I was referring to, because it makes it feel more real and relatable than most movie characters. To me, an artist's music is like its own person. It can have a story to tell, it can make you feel an emotion, and it can be there for you in your best and worst moments. A lot of artists infuse their music with only one theme or emotion. Party, 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 angst, angst, angst. And while some of them manage to perfectly capture an emotion or experience, that's all they have to bring. 
And no matter how much you might enjoy or relate to them, at a point you get tired of having the same conversation and reliving the same things over and over again. People are not one-sided. We're complex. Each of us has an almost infinite number of emotions and interests than we can have simultaneously. One person can be an adrenaline-seeking bungee jumper and have a passion for collecting leaves from different types of trees. Another person can be a huge fan of stand-up comedy, but their favorite movies list includes Grave of the Fireflies and Titanic. You can have otakus that love watching anime all day, but then they go to the gym and... Okay, maybe that's stretching it, but you get the point. The Subcarpathian's music sounds like the soundtrack to someone's entire life, not just their angsty adolescence phase or fantasy-filled adulthood. And we as the audience believe that this person could exist, because we've met someone like this. Us. The post-communism Romanian that grew up listening to Tupac and Wu-Tang on their Walkmans, and Ion Dalanescu at weddings and lame New Year's TV specials. And yet, somehow, we never could find a way to enjoy the second one. Listening to their music is like releasing a feeling of uneasy conflict that we always carried in ourselves, because despite wanting to do it, we could never find a way to bring together the world of the past and the world of the present in a natural and a harmonious way. Kind of like when you tried teaching your parents how to use a computer, but they kept losing the mouse cursor and every double click had a free second delay between clicks. I understand that their music might not leave the same impact on you if you didn't grow up in Romania around the time of after 1989, but I feel like the messages of the Subcarpathians and of their music can be universally understood. Notice that I used messages as in plural, because I did mention that an artist's intentions can be different from that of their creation, and I think it applies here. Because I don't think that the Subcarpathians intended for their music to have the effect that it does, or even realize how deep of an emotional core their music would reach. If they did, I think they should be looking into getting their doctorates in psychology as musical therapists. Instead, I think that for them, like for us, it was a need for relief from the constant struggle that we feel in trying to define ourselves by the limitations that we've imposed on ourselves. We only think of ourselves as the sum of our labels, whether we're aware of them or not. But the Subcarpathians showed us that by going beyond them, we can find an entirely new world of our own design, in which there is nothing more enjoyable than exploring it and allowing every side of us to have fun by just letting it be. What I felt an entire generation was feeling, and it made it easy for us to resonate on that level. Look, I might be looking too deep into this, and I probably am, but that's only because their music hit me that hard, and I enjoy it so much. I want to end this by mentioning my two favorite songs from them. The first, and the one I probably enjoy the most, is Hit It With The Bow, the song that I played at the beginning of this video. I love it because of how naturally all the genres that it takes inspiration from come together and they just build off of each other's energy, creating a hype that most dubstep DJs couldn't even dream of reaching. I feel like it's their best crafted song to date. Plus that drop though! Hit it with the bow! Woo! Um, sorry about that. But if there is one song that perfectly captures the essence and identity of the Subcarpathians, it's fittingly the first song from their first album, Lotar of Bucharest. The title uses a properly untranslatable Romanian word that refers to a musician of traditional music who is now living in the capital of the country, which is commonly viewed as the most culturally distant from its traditional origins. The song itself has a relatively simple production, making its lyrics stand out more and its message more clearly understood. I unified ideas that I had in my head, as in the countryside trip and a couple years of rap. This is not a literary circle. I'm not talking from above. But maybe it'll hit you the way it hit me. Oh. Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more creative content coming in the future. But until next time, my name is Murphy and that was my story.